they're being surrounded by friggin' UFOs. Uh, so today I'm just doing a quick go over of the Merge podcast that hosted David Fravor. If you don't know who he is, he's the pilot that's seen the Tic Tac over California in 2004 that went famous. Um, this interview with him is all about the stigma and the ridicule behind the UFO subject, so I thought I'd just play a bit and get into it. Some of the folks that are physics-minded that say, well, that's against the law of physics. No, it's against the laws of physics that we know. Mm-hmm. You know, Einstein came up with a lot of laws of physics and, and theories that went against what people believed at the time. And you look at what people believe at the time on that subject, such as religion. People still believe in religion that's been around for thousands of years. But if you look at how backwards that is in terms of the evidence there is for religion even existing and how it's compared to UFOs is just unbelievable how it's so accepted to be religious and believe in these things because they've been around for that long. But what they really are are just myths and stories. There is actually no factual basis of any religion actually ever existing. And may I correct myself, I mean actually physically existing. So when people say something's a myth, they usually say it's a false story. In the ancient times, they thought they were a recount of the truth. They thought it was reality. Just like the Christian people today believe in biblical stories like they are reality. But in fact, biblical stories are myths with no factual evidence at all. They are all just as mythological as the ancient Greek, Roman, Nordic myths were. They are all the same thing. The thing is that Christian people have been indoctrinated, and I mean brainwashed for the last 16 centuries, to believe that these myths are historical reality. But they are not. They're just myths. There is actually more footage of UFOs in our sky and that they are all connected to paranormal phenomena throughout human history than there has been for any religion. There is zero evidence that gods have been sighted or captured on camera sitting in the clouds in our skies or atmospheres. There is zero evidence of religion having any sort of paranormal or spiritual effect on any human being in recorded history. There is more chance that we have been genetically modified and placed and bred on this earth in the creation of mankind. There is a zero possibility of Adam and Eve conceiving or a Virgin Mary giving birth. Zero. So when I hear religious groups or people suppressing or ridiculing this subject, it actually does make me laugh. Like, how hypocritical is that? First of all, how do you deal with the, with the religions? Every one of these religions is going to basically look to whatever that is and say, okay, And I hear this all the time when I bring this subject up, always with people that have closed-minded views. It's like going back to the 1800s and saying to someone that a mobile phone will exist one day. Of course you're going to get kicked back and they're not going to believe it, but the point in technology we are at the moment and how progressed we are supposedly as a civilization, we should be able to open our mind to the point to be able to accept that there are other possibilities if we just opened our minds. Mm -hmm. So because we don't have it now, doesn't mean it's not possible it just means we haven't figured it out and if you talk to you know because i've talked to bob he'll tell you i said how long do you think you what you saw uh he said at least another hundred years because our material science it's the same thing with anything else you go oh can we do this we don't have the material science to do it but now we do so i was talking to him one day and i said uh i said hey how would you describe it? He said in 1989, because he got, he says he got to go inside the craft. And this is obviously to the audience, if you're assuming that you believe Bob. But I'll just say Bob's a very legitimate guy, and he's very smart. He said if you'd asked me, it was made out of wax, and then you heat it up, and then all the seams would melt because it didn't have any seams or rivets or anything like that. That was 1989. I said, what about now? This is a couple years ago. He said 3D printing. He goes, you would just 3D print it. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at anything 3D printed, you know you can make things that move in 3D printing, and but it's one solid piece. It's literally revolution. There, there's a guy that made a whole car mm-hmm. out of 3D printing. So the brake assembly is literally one unit. It's made as one unit. And the piston inside moves and it doesn't have, you can't brake it, you can't, it's... And what, it's, we're, what we're probably imagining here is more of, you know, not 3D printing as we have it today, but, you know, a technological progression that would make it probably visually seamless and yes. very strong, not what we have well, today. It, it's going to get better. And like electric cars and other technology that's actually been... Uh, edited over time and progressed to what it is today it's not new technology it was around it's an old technology that's been revolutionized with everything coming out right now with with mr grosh literally saying the same thing that bob lazar said in 1989 and you know bob got chastised for it 
and this guy's coming out now it's like because because it's accepted in 1989 if you just said ufo uap whatever in washington dc you'd have been laughed out of your seat in congress well now you've got active congress men and women that are pushing policy you know and i think it was uh, senator rubio and senator gillibrand who are literally diametrically opposed politically <laughs> but on this thing they're not diametrically opposed and i've sat in rooms with both republicans and democrats who are diametrically opposed and uh but on this uh topic it's bipartisan there is no republican or democrat it's like what are we trying to do and all people want to do is this is not about little green men and yes it's not about that it's about that we've had one of the biggest secrets of our modern history and ancient history suppressed from us and as well we've had a lost century of technology that we could have evolutionized by this point in time and been a hundred years ahead of where we are now and they're in denial that we have destroyed our planet through oil fuel which has caused climate change what it is if it leads to something like that because we have stuff so be it to me it's not important what's important is from our incident onward is um, how do we figure out what these are how do they work can we use that technology with social media and now the support of elected officials that want to know you know if there is stuff it's only a matter of time mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time you can only hide so long because someone's gonna talk. So what I'm getting from listening to David Fravor's podcast is that the technology that sounds so far-fetched and unbelievable isn't that unbelievable and far-fetched because if we just opened our minds enough to the aspect that these technologies might already exist and be around us, but they've been hidden from us for the last century as Dr. Stephen Greer talks about in his documentary, The Lost Century and How to Reclaim It, that We've already had these technologies, and if we can just accept that these technologies are reality, it might help us open our mind up to the possibility of the UFO subject being real.